From one neighbor to another, WCTE PBS is here for you. Coming up next is Live at 5 on WCTE PBS and its streaming platforms to provide updates on communities throughout Central Tennessee. Hi, and welcome to Live at 5. Uh, my name's Craig Lefevre. I'm the station manager here at WCTE. Uh, we're glad to be here with you uh, this evening on Live at 5. Uh, we have with us today uh, Wayne Key, who's the extension agent uh, here in Cookville for the uh, UT Agricultural Extension Service. Uh, and we're going to be talking a little, a little about our, uh, uh, our springtime interest, uh, maybe looking outdoors to gardens, uh, lawns, things like that. Uh, just we'll see what comes up. But Wayne, welcome. We're glad yes. to have you here. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. So, so it is getting springtime. People are wanting to get out in the yard and do some things. Um, what is the top concern that you have this year? What are the what are people asking you about? Everybody? Yeah, this time of year, of course, spring gets really busy for us because we get uh, you know people. I guess we've come out of winter. Temperatures are warming up. We're getting some spring rains, and people have lots of questions. They're outside in their yard. They've noticed something that's different or not the same as it was, uh, or they've got a problem or an issue, and that's when we get those calls. I, I like to joke around and tell everybody at the office, for me, for extension, uh, in the agriculture sector, those Fridays and Mondays are very important and, mm -hmm. and very busy because people on Fridays want to know, well, what seed should I buy? What chemicals should I use? What can I do over the weekend when I'm off from work to take care of whatever the issue is? And then Mondays are busy because people have been out in the yard all weekend, and they've just Discovered that hey, there's an issue, a problem, an insect, whatever it's going on, and uh, they I get lots of calls and office visits on those days. Yeah, so we're as we can expect if we go out to Lowe's this afternoon or tomorrow or Saturday, we're not going to be able to get a parking place. Yeah, uh, yeah. And most of those people are are going to be uh, going to be planting. Uh, planting annuals, planting perennials, what are they doing? Yeah, we got a lot of people right now uh, gardening. You know, gardening is very popular uh, with the pandemic, with COVID. A lot of people have discovered that, hey, I, not only do I want to know where my vegetables and fruits and, and crops come from, but maybe I have the time now and the effort and want to carry on with producing some stuff myself. And so uh, people this time of year are looking at perennials and flowers and whatnot. Uh, they want to beautify, beautify their, their landscape, their patios or front porches. And so we get a lot of questions uh, uh, and a lot of interest, I guess you'd say this time with even vegetable gardening. Uh, you know, we're still a few weeks away before really getting those uh, summer warm season vegetables in the ground. Um, so people definitely be uh, be on the lookout for, for good deals on some plants and things that you can get uh, planted. Uh, Really, the biggest thing that we see uh, that is popular right now is lawns. We get a lot of lawn questions this time of year. It's spring of the year. They've had weeds in their year, their uh, lawn all the winter long, and so they want to either do some renovations or come in and do something that uh, beautifies and improves their yard. And uh, lots of things can be done there. I, I, the number one thing I'll tell people is um, if they're going to do something to their yard regarding fertilizer or seed, the first thing to do and to start with is to do a soil test. And we do those at the office. Right. You can bring your soil in for that vegetable garden for your lawn with those go to a laboratory in nashville the university of tennessee laboratory at ellington they're tested you get your results back in about seven eight nine days from the uh, uh through email and uh, from there you know then how much fertilizer to put out what type of fertilizer to put out and what really the ground needs in order to grow a good crop mm -hmm. so uh, most of those uh tests around here are probably going to come back and uh, the main thing is usually is usually what nitrogen and yeah is, is that something that's good to put on in the spring or should we wait again until fall this time of year is an excellent time to put on what we call a complete fertilizer which has all three numbers on the bag so as you look at a bag of fertilizer if it has 10 dash 10 dash 10 those are all three components in the fertilizer uh, on a relative basis based on 100 pounds so at a 10 10 10 would be 10 percent nitrogen which is the first number uh, phosphorus is the second number that's the p and the third number k which is potassium so 10 10 10 would have 10 percent um, active ingredient or active product uh, per 100 pounds so that's how that's kind of measured out those results that you get back uh, from the laboratory will tell you um, so many pounds per thousand square feet or per foot of row space in your garden it'll tell you then uh, you know the, the rate to put so you're putting out exactly what you need and yes now's a great time to get those products out there uh, we're still good enough of a time if you want to put on a weed and feed product for crabgrass prevention for those summer perennials that'll be coming back this is a good time to do those things uh, here now early April would work really well in your yard oh great All right we've had uh, we had last 
last uh, uh, into last summer, we had a little bit of a we had a little bit of an invasion. Uh, and I know a lot of people lost their uh, uh, lost their beautiful lawns and had to uh, ha- had to uh, to make some adjustments there. What was what was that all about? Yeah, we had an influx of what we call the uh, fall uh, army worm. Um, that time of year in September here in, in Cookville and in Putnam County and across the Upper Cumberland, we had a lot of uh, dry air. We had a lot of warm, dry soil. And so uh, those particular uh, adults, which are flying insects, were able to catch that southerly flow of wind up from the Gulf. We had a lot of that uh, fronts that come through that brought that warm weather up. And so those adults are able to catch that jet stream, that air, and come north more than more, more north than, let's say, Alabama, uh, Georgia, Mississippi, where they deal with fall armyworms every year. Uh, for us, it was a new thing. We hadn't seen those. The adults landed in this area and laid those uh, laid eggs, and then three days later, you had a small worm that eventually developed into a larger worm that was very voracious, eat quite a bit, and destroyed in just a matter of days many, many yards. And I had lots of phone calls and lots of photographs and pictures and went out and looked at several yards and tried to help people come up with an answer for what to do. And once they've come through and they you, you, they came through as they did, and once the adults have left, the uh, the, the caterpillar had left the only thing left to do was to come in and try to reseed in the fall sometime in the month of september early october get some seed back out there and hopefully renovate that yard in the fall of the year i do get a lot of questions um people want to ask me this time of year about seeding putting out grass seed and mm-hmm. i'd like to talk about that or just mention you know now is not a great time to seed we really recommend the fall of the year uh in the month of september for example is a great time to seed for your lawn we really recommend a turf type variety variety of seed. There's several on the market. When you go into a lawn and garden center, a co-op, a tractor supply, um, your Lowe's store or Home Depot, you're looking for that turf type variety of fescue seed because those have been bred and genetically altered so that they grow short, they're darker green, uh, they perform well under close three inch mowing for example, they like uh, they, they like that kind of environment and fall allows them to establish, get started, get the roots developed throughout the winter and be ready to go come spring. The worst thing now about planting in the spring when it comes to grass seed is the fact that it's going to get, it's going to germinate, it will turn green your yard will look great you'll look amazing you'll be very happy you'll have spent a lot of money more than likely and come about june or july when it gets dry those uh, those little plants are going to take a hit and they're really gonna they're really gonna suffer the only way you could really do spring um seeding this time of year uh, in the spring is if you have uh, an irrigation system then you could right. keep that watered you could keep those plants healthy and viable and do a good job i tell people not to far, to uh excuse me to plant seed right now when it comes to your lawn because if they do die out you're still going to come back and have to reseed again in the fall. Mm-hmm. So the uh, you know the the cost there is going to be double. You know by the time you seed in the spring, those die and you seed again in the fall. So okay, well that's good advice. Um, we've got uh, we got a few minutes left here. Um, you were uh, you told me earlier you've got uh, you've got an event coming up with the Cookville Master Gardeners. Tell yeah, me yeah, Master that. Gardeners are Putnam County Master Gardener group. Uh, we have about forty five members that are very active, very strong. They have a greenhouse at the fairgrounds that they seed and raise many many vegetable plants, tomatoes, peppers, several varieties of of jalapenos and bell peppers and all types of colors. I think they have over forty varieties of tomatoes this year they're offering. So on April the thirtieth, April the thirtieth, which is a great time to start. Your garden, by the way, that's going to be going on at the uh, Putnam County Fairgrounds on Saturday, April the 30th, from 8 to 2. Uh, gates will be open. They'll do cash or check, or uh, they've even got an. Uh, they'll be able to take credit cards as well, and uh, it's a big event. We've not able been able to have it, of course, Craig, in the last couple of years, and so we're uh, we're very excited about that. They've worked hard. They started planting seeds uh, early in February. Uh, the plants look amazing. They have a huge offering of plants. Uh, you can also you can go to the Putnam County Master Gardener Facebook page or our UT Extension Facebook page and you can even go ahead and pre-order and buy online and order your plants and see what the offerings are now. So that's something that's new this year is uh, you know the online purchases. Well that's great. That's great. Yeah uh, because I don't know if you're like me um, you're 
you, you've got a favorite tomato and yep. you, yeah. you you've tried to seed them already and you may have you may have done well you may not have yeah uh, but they're going to have if they got 40 varieties of tomatoes they ought to be able to cover we have anybody. tons of tomatoes they have cherry type tomatoes you know salad type tomatoes mm -hmm. bromas for example cherokee purple uh the list of celebrities the big boys the ones you've all heard of the the master gardeners they do a great job they you know they really know what they're doing they offer their plants at a good uh good price for the community and it's a great community event bring your wagon bring your trailer people bring all kind of stuff wheelbarrows to haul plants out the car with and uh, we're there to assist uh, all the master gardeners are there that day to answer questions we get questions about what we're how to plant where to plant that kind of thing so it's a it's a fun event we're looking forward to that well great um if somebody needs to know more if uh, uh -huh. if they watch this show and they say i need to know more <laughs> yes that's what um, we're there for yes wh where, how do they get a hold of you how do they get a hold of somebody at the extension office yeah our, our ut extension office for putnam county um, we're a, a research-based uh, University of Tennessee uh, institute uh, based on education. So we're there to answer questions, help you find quest, uh, answers to your questions. We're at 900 South Walnut Avenue here in Cookville. Uh, we're on the back side of the fairgrounds, basically. Uh, our number is 526-4561. You can reach us that way. You can email me at jkey3 at utk.edu. I get pictures and emails all the time with questions. Call the office. I'll be glad to help you. Uh, go to our Facebook page, our website. Uh, there's tons of ways to reach us. Uh, come in the office. Just come visit with us. We'd love to see you. Um, so that's some, certainly something to, to, that we want people to know, that we are open and we're ready for business, and we'd love to have you come by and visit with us. Yeah, come out there and come out there and look at the gardens around the, around the extension office. It's beautiful um, in, the, in, the, in the summer and the fall. I yeah. don't know what they look like right now. They look good. They're master gardeners. They, they take care of the grounds around the office building. They take care of the courthouse. They do several places. Farmer's Market, for example, is another place that they maintain the, the beauty and the landscape for sure. Okay. Well, great. Uh, all right. Well, it's going to be uh, going to be a couple minutes here. We've got a break coming up. We're going to have, uh, uh, after the break, we will have Ray Kucher from uh, Tennessee State Parks. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll, uh, we'll be right back. Welcome to your April PBS Passport Update. I'm Josh Deepen with WCTE PBS. In case you missed it, Sanditon Season 2 will be available only on Passport after it broadcasts. Simply log in, sit back, and catch up. If you're hungry for some nail-biting British content, both seasons of Cobra, a show about cyber warfare in modern-day London, are streaming only on Passport. Fun fact, if you've got an April birthday, that's something you have in common with none other than Loretta Lynn. The famous coal miner's daughter singer-songwriter discusses her life and career in My Story and My Words on a Passport exclusive special. Spring is in full swing, get in touch with your artistic side and paint some landscapes alongside Bob Ross by streaming the best of the joy of painting. Other popular PBS series available on Passport include Great Performances, Austin City Limits, and America's Test Kitchen. If you're a Nicola Walker fan, star of such shows like Unforgotten, you'll love her new show, available for streaming only on Passport. The brand new series Annika features Walker as a detective with a troubled work life and as a troubled mother at home. This show is highly anticipated and not available for broadcast, so if you want to watch it, log on and start streaming on or after the April 17th premiere. Lastly, Benjamin Franklin, a new documentary by Ken Burns, premieres this month. If you missed the broadcast, then you can catch up with a Passport membership benefit starting April 25th. Franklin's fascinating life as an ambassador, inventor, and founding father is nothing if not incomparable. Watch that and many other Ken Burns specials on Passport. If you're not yet a member of WCTE PBS and are interested in becoming one, head to wcte.org forward slash passport for information on how to sign up or scan the QR code below using your smartphone or tablet. That's it for the April PBS Passport Update. I'm Josh Deepin. Happy spring and keep streaming. On the next episode of It's Your Business, we take a trip through the past with guest Louis Matheny, owner of Harper's Rare Books and Collectibles, and Ray and Charlene Notgrass, owners of Notgrass History. Join us right here for another incredible episode of It's Your Business. My name is Donna Matson. 
Director of Human Resources and Business Operations with WCTE PBS. Did you know the broadcasting industry in Tennessee is thriving and offers exciting career opportunities? WCTE has immediate openings for your consideration. Benefits include health, dental, vision, life, retirement, sick time, vacation, holidays, and AFLAC. Visit WCTE.org. Come join our team. Welcome back to WCTE's Live at Five. I'm Craig Lefevre, Station Manager. Uh, happy to be hosting Live at Five today. Uh, our first guest was Wayne Key from the Agricultural Extension Service. He was real interesting. We have, uh, uh, we have someone else who's going to be at least as interesting as Wayne was, and that's uh, Ray Kutcher from uh, Tennessee State Parks. Welcome, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to have you here. Uh, so just a quick introduction. Uh, what's going on in parks uh, well, today? Well, the weather's nice today. People are getting out a little bit more. As, as April gets further in, we get more and more busy. People want to get outside and enjoy the warm weather. Yeah. Is it, are there, uh, uh, which, now I know you're, you're at, at Cummins Falls. Correct. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been at Cummins Falls? About 10 years. Is that right? Since mm -hmm. before the, or, or, but since the state purchased it? or Since we purchased it. Yeah. Yes, the day well, after we bought it. You've got some history over there then. That's a, yes. uh, and I've seen a, uh, I haven't been over there in the last uh, in the last year, I don't guess, but uh, there was a lot of improvements uh, from when it started. Tell us a little bit about. Yeah, we we built a visitor center and more mm -hmm. office space, which is was an, a place for our visitors to come and uh, and be introduced to the area and what's there. And uh, um, and then we also have space to do inside programs where we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's a little nice for welcoming to when people arrive and maybe what it was once before. Yeah, well, that's that's good. I also noticed there's a corresponding uh, uh, increase in traffic a few years ago. Yes. Um, it, it, I, you know, remember going out there uh, a decade ago, and they're not being, you know, we might be the only ones out there walking around. It's not the case anymore, is it? No, it's not. After after we were open, after we opened as a park, um, visitation each year grew. It was un unbelievable how much it grew. Really, it got to the point where it was out of hand, actually. Mm. And, uh, and so we had to try to think of the, what do we need to do. Uh, visitation is out of control. People aren't maybe enjoying their experience as much as they once were. Um, and therefore we were also, because of the sheer numbers and people maybe not being prepared for the outing they were going on, we would end up having a lot of accidents as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been, uh, you know, we, we see that we typically don't think very much about it until we see something in the news. Uh, and, and unfortunately, we've, we've seen that a couple of times in the last five or six years. Um, tell us a little bit about what you've done to, uh, uh, to improve the safety out there and, uh, and to generally just assist people in, in doing what they want to do when they come to a park. Well, since I just mentioned the, the visitation being so high, the, one of the things we did, we try to get, a, get control of that, get a handle on our, our numbers each day. And so we um, did some research and decided that uh, a permit system was going to serve our needs. And so two, two years ago, we implemented the, uh, the permit system where a person, if, if they're coming to the park, they don't need the permit. If you're just going to go through the overlook or hike some of the other trails. But if we want to go down in the gorge to the base of the waterfall where a lot of, and most of the people wanted to go to, and that's where our problems generally were, then you have to get a permit to get down there. And that way we're able to only give out so many permits at a time in the, or in a day. Mm -hmm. And that limits them are down there, so people can have a better experience and enjoy their experience. And it also helps us manage the uh, the number of accidents, those kind of things, better as well. Mm -hmm. uh, are, is there a lot of uh, is there a lot of supervision right around the falls? Is there, there is, yeah. We, we, along with that, we have we we keep we we learned long years ago that we needed to keep a few people down at the base of the falls all day long, just to watch out for safety issues. And uh, just try to keep things under control. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of safety issues are you are you do you encounter? What kind of things do you hate to see happen? Well, uh, people climbing on cliffs right beside the waterfall, for instance, were very slippery, and they mm -hmm. um, have a high probability of falling. People who get in the water and, and aren't used to natural waterways and and um, get themselves in tr trouble and start struggling, possibly drown. Mm -hmm. um, People slipping just on just crossing on rocks. It's very slippery down there and, and getting injured. So we have people down there who can address those things. Hopefully before they happen. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. immediately after they happen. 
what I know that uh, you know, it, it, as you well know, it, there was a mill there for a, for a long time just above there, mm-hmm. uh, and and that was one of the things that that um, uh, it, it caused the mill not to be in, in use more than it was was the the flash floods, mm-hmm. and uh, and that we still have those. Uh, periodically, do you have a, do you all have equipment to predict what those now, and do you do things differently when when you know there might be conditions yeah. might be right? Yeah, when we first opened the park, I guess we had no idea of the the um, I guess the probability of true flash floods in, mm-hmm. in that particular creek. And uh, now that we do, we we have some mechanisms up, upstream. Um, actually, when after one of our floods, um, some Professor at Tennessee Tech, Dr. Evan Hart, got in touch with me and said, "Have have some some things that maybe could help you." Hmm. And so, uh, so we worked with Tennessee Tech some and and, and got some information and, and and learned some things that we could do. And we put some storm, um, some stream gauges, I should call them, upstream of us. There's there's um, five locations, excuse me, no, seven locations that have gauges that can measure the the depth of the water. And they also have rain gauges that can tell us how much rain in a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And so those are preset gauges. So if the water rises a certain number of inches in a certain time frame, it sends us a text message and lets us know. So then before a flood happens, we know that the water is rising miles upstream of us. Right. And so therefore we can take action and, and, and get people out and move them out if we need to. Yeah. And, and the reason we needed that, because it could be storming a few miles upstream of us and dropping a lot of rain and that's we right. wouldn't even know it at the park. That's right. That's right. Well, that's that, that's a wonderful system to have in place. Is that uh, uh, has that uh, reduced your incidence of uh, of, uh, of emergency? Uh, uh, that with response? along with a number of other things, the National Weather Service also keep an eye out and they'll alert us sometimes when they see something coming mm-hmm. before our before our gauges would even have a chance to receive the rain. And then we have um, radar. We're watching the National Weather Service radar throughout the day. We have our, our watershed drawn on the map. Mm-hmm. So if a storm comes into our watershed, we immediately know it. And we can immediately get people out without even really having to rely on the gauges. We have a, a mm-hmm. n- l- number of layers to help protect that because we don't want to rely on any one layer and then something to fail. Yep, that's right. That's right. So you've got to, you, you really. You, Increase the 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 safety and everybody's consciousness of it out there. Um, so we're seeing big numbers of visitors. Where are most of the people come from coming from? Are they from lo- are they local? Or are they coming from out of town? Most of them from Middle Tennessee. Yeah. Um, maybe not the immediate counties right here touching us, but from Middle Tennessee. But uh, well, I said most of them. I'm going to be back up. The, in the beginning, it was most of them. Now, honestly, throughout the summer, over seventy percent of our visitors were from out of state. Hmm. Wow. That's that's uh, that's an amazing uh, uh, draw for our community. It's it's a wonderful thing yeah. to have that to yeah. uh, uh, have that coming in. Now you there's uh, you mentioned to me um, uh, several other parks around that are that are waterfall parks, mm-hmm. the Fall Creek Falls. Yeah, in this area we're we're blessed with with some beautiful scenery with waterfall parks and and they have a lot of you know steep cliffs and steep bluffs, which also they have a lot of the same safety issues that we mm-hmm. have when people with getting warmer people are wanting to come out and enjoy those places and uh, and water attracts people especially in the hot of summer yeah yeah um, you know so there, there are things that would probably help people to be more prepared and have a, a more safe enjoyable outing mm-hmm. um, and, and one of those would simply be going to our website before they go and do a little bit of planning you know mm-hmm. what's the, what's the, the website park. address to it's, it's tnstateparks.com Okay, and that'll that will you can look at the state park that you're going to and find out what the what the conditions are, maybe what you need to bring, what you need to wear. Yeah, and learn a, bit, a little bit about the like if you're going on a particular hike, what the mm-hmm. hike might be like, those mm-hmm. kind of things. Uh, 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 yeah, I've, I've I was at I looked at that website, uh, and and there's another one, uh, trails all trail. I think it was all trails, but anyway, over at. Uh, uh, Window Cliff, which is a new uh, is a new uh, area, at least mm-hmm. uh, as far as the state control goes. Yes. Uh, there, it was a bad trail that you had to go to. Uh, is that? It's a rugged trail. It's a rugged Very trail. Rugged, yes. So, uh, uh, do you work over there at all? You, I, I don't. No. no. Uh, I've not. I've not been over there in, in forever myself. It's, it's, but th- their hike is very similar to our hike going into Burgess, okay. maybe with more water crossings. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's. Uh, uh, I remember that, but uh, so so in a couple of minutes we got left. Is there anything else you want to you want to talk about? Uh? Yeah, yeah. I would just like you know to reiterate to people if if you're going into natural waters, which 
a lot of people it's very different than a swimming pool which a lot of people mm -hmm. spend most of their life going into you go in the natural waterway there are a whole different set of issues to deal with and 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 the number one thing people can do to help increase their safety is wear u.s coast guard approved life jacket mm -hmm. that's, that's the number one thing and and we see that so often but people come out to our pool and, and they don't, they'll be walking on what they think is shallow water and take another step and they're in deep water all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. and, um, and just having a life jacket on can prevent so many things from happening. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, that's good advice anywhere. I mean, if you look at uh, 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 TWRA's website, it says the same thing. If you look at the, the Corps of Engineers' website, it says the same thing. Wear your life jacket. Yes. Uh, and it can't be, I don't think it can be emphasized uh, uh, near enough uh, because even if you're a strong swimmer, uh, things, you, happen. things happen, uh, whether, whether you're, and, and you think, well, I need a life jacket if I'm in a boat, but <laughs> it's not, it, it's not just boats uh, that you need a life jacket around those. I know I've waded a lot of creeks and, uh, the footing could be bad sometimes. Yes. Uh, you can get your, you can get your foot caught in limestone rocks pretty quickly and, yes. uh, but th that's good advice. And, and perhaps you maybe once were a good swimmer. It's been 10 years since you've been swimming yeah and and you don't know it but you're not as strong a swimmer as you once were yeah, that's right. well, i'm and sure the, and the current gets can play into all that exactly and i, and I know that i'm not a, i'm a better floater than i used to be <laughs> but probably not a strong uh, swimmer so um so so what are the hours out there at the park what can, what kind what time can people come we're open from eight until six from eight until six, eight until six every day, six, every weekends day. included. Weekends included. Uh, what's your schedule like on holidays? You all, I imagine you all are open. And We're open every holiday, same hours, eight to six. You're yes. still fully staffed, just like. Yes, we are. Well, that's great. Probably more so on holidays. Yeah, I would imagine we got more people coming in. Well, uh, it's been good to have you here. Um, we're we're just about out of time, and I guess I need to uh, to uh, uh, to wrap this up here in a minute, but. Um, we're just we're glad to have you, Ray. Uh, Thank you. And and everybody can go to the uh, go to the Tennessee State Parks website. Uh, check out uh, check out the information they have there for you before you go out, uh, and be prepared. Uh, and you'll have a lot better time. You won't, you won't be as risky, and uh, uh, and and you can just get out and enjoy yourself uh, in the wilds of Tennessee. Um, we're going to take a short break and come back, and I'll wrap up the show and uh, and. We'll go right now. Good morning, Mool High School. So like right now, the senior class is stressing over college apps. Please begin. I would love UC Berkeley. Harvard, Stanford. Columbia. I guess you're just looking at like the cream of the crop right here. I work hard and I strive to be a nerd. The pressure is insurmountable at times. Oh my God! It's the best. <laughs> WCTE's Great TV Auction is May 31st through June 12th. All of the behind the scenes action is underway and we need your help. Join in on all the fun by becoming a donation solicitor. For more information, please contact Miranda Maynard via email or call 931-528-2222. Online is Ancestry.com. MyHeritage is another one. There's uh, there's a whole lot of information on the internet that you start digging for and you'll find it. And a lot of uh, resources at your state libraries and uh, at your local libraries. The resources that I started using was before the internet and that was uh, the library. The library was the most important resource. A lot of people forget about it nowadays and just do the internet searches but there's so much more information at the library that's undiscovered it's a, it'd be be well worth your time if you're interested in doing genealogy to to go to the libraries local libraries and the state libraries especially state libraries Just wanted to say thanks for watching uh, Live at Five here on WCTE. Uh, it's been uh, it's been good to have our guests today. Been good to have you tuning in. Uh, be sure to tune in next week for more great local information. Uh, be sure to go out and uh, and like us on Facebook and Instagram or YouTube or whatever you do on those sites. We've got 
Uh, we've got content on all of them. Uh, you might want to look at our WCTE phone app. You can go to your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store uh, and download that app. You can get, uh, get all kind of updates about events, push notifications about things going on at WCTE. Um, go to WCTE.org. That's our website. Uh, you can find out more about our shows and upcoming events. You'll notice there's a, there's a little uh, red uh, donate button at the top and if you click that you can become a member and you can get even more great PBS and WCTE uh, content with Passport. Thank you very much. We'll see you again next week. From one neighbor to another, WCTE PBS is here for you. Join us back for the Encore on Sunday at noon. A brand new show of Live at 5 will return at 5 p.m. next Thursday. Thank you for watching.